The fact that the story of Jesus, the, 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 the incarnation, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus, the fact that they sound somewhat similar, just similar, to these other mythic stories, actually, I would argue, like Lewis does, that it strengthens the Christian faith. And I'll tell you why. All right. If Jesus came and did this, and it was totally foreign to everyone, it just didn't even make sense, we had no yearning for it, it would suggest that a foreign God had invaded us. But what it in fact suggests is that which all people in all times and all cultures and religions have yearned for has just happened, right? Jesus has come, and see, this is very important to me, and I'll bet a lot of you maybe have worried about this when you read the Old Testament, and you're like, wait a minute, God revealed himself to half a percent of the population and ignored everybody else? That seems a little bit troubling. Not if what Lewis says is true. If you're a Christian, we believe that Jesus Christ fulfilled the Old Testament law and prophets. Right? That's not contested in Christianity. But I would also argue, alongside Lewis and many others, that not only did Jesus fulfill the whole Old Testament, he fulfilled the highest yearnings of the pagan people. Understand? See, in mere Christianity, Lewis says, before the coming of Christ, God spoke to us in three ways. He spoke to us through our conscience. He spoke to us through a specific people he chose called the Jews. And he spoke, only Lewis could say this, through the good dreams of the pagans. Right? God did not leave himself without a witness. Only to the Jews did we get what we call special revelation. Only the Jews had the revealed word of God, the prophets, the law, etc. But to the pagans, all the non-Jews, the Gentiles, right? God spoke, but he spoke in different ways. Through nature, through their conscience, he spoke through their good dreams. Now again, they were like, see, here's a good way to put it. The Bible tells us that we now see dimly as in a mirror, right? Through a glass darkly in the King James. We see dimly in a mirror. I would argue that the pagans saw very dimly in a dirty mirror, but they saw something, okay? They yearned, and Jesus fulfilled that yearning. Isn't that beautiful? Then Lewis goes one step further and says something, especially if you're an English professor like me that's so important. He said, the neat thing about Jesus is that Jesus is more than Balder, but he's not less than Balder. Let me explain this, because this is very important, especially if you grew up in a, you know, kind of a super rationalistic home where your parents kept you away from mythology and stories and thought all that was evil. Look, Jesus is more than Balder, by which he means he's historical, he's real, he's true. But he's not less than Balder. What that means is that Jesus not only appeals to our rational, logical, intellectual side, Jesus appeals to the heart, what yearns for myth and yearns for story, for imagination. He speaks to that just as powerfully as he speaks to the mind. The melding or marriage of reason and imagination is so strong in Lewis.